I've tried pre-workout, it doesn't work on me. Welcome back to yet another video of us, the Review Bros, and something a little bit different today. We're gonna to be covering the top 10 reasons why your pre-workout might not be working for you. We hear this quite a lot. You know, this pre-workout doesn't work for me. I've got a friend who says this pre-workout doesn't hit him at all. You know, what are the different variables that might cause this? Let's get into it. And if you're new here, please do hit that subscribe button, tick that bell icon, because we drop videos at least three or four times a week. You know, we've got constant reviews coming in almost by the day, so don't miss out. So we're gonna keep this as short and sweet as possible, as uh, accurate and concise as possible, going by our own anecdotal experience in the years we've been taking lots and lots of different pre-workouts. So point number one is always weigh your scoop. Are you getting the correct serving? Perhaps if you're not feeling your pre-workout, you might be underdosing it by a significant margin. We've come across this many a time where a rounded scoop or a flat scoop can come in three, four, five grams less than the actual serving size. And that might be the answer as to why the pre-workout's not hitting you as it should be. Reason number two is that you need to allow ample time for the pre-workout to kick in. So many people take a pre-workout, bang it down, and then immediately start training, like literally immediately after you've taken the pre-workout. Me and Aaron, we've always said this, you know, especially for these more high stim pre-workouts, or for any pre-workout really as a rule of thumb, allow 30 to 60 minutes for the pre-workout to fully kick in because that's when it's, you know, it takes time for your body to actually digest all of the ingredients and get it all fully functioning within the body. So, you know, it's just impossible to expect a lot of these ingredients to work in five, 10 minutes. You know, you really have got to give it enough time. So if you're one of those people that's training immediately after drinking the pre-workout, try just chilling out, sitting still, giving it a good half hour to an hour to kick in and then I'm sure you'll definitely feel the uh, the power of the pre-workout. And sort of attached to that point, another key thing I just brushed on there is to sit still after you've taken the pre-workout. You know, don't take it and then go running around doing errands around the house or, you know, exerting energy. It's very key to just take it and stay as, you know, as just relaxed as possible, really. Just let it kick in. Let your body digest it. Don't, like I say, go running around. Number three, another important factor is to allow enough gap after your last meal. So again, don't be taking it down a massive meal like a McDonald's, for example, and then 10 minutes later smashing down a pre-workout because it's just it's just going to sit on top of the food in the stomach. It's not going to be absorbed properly. It's not going to be used. You're going to be feeling rough and bloated. It just is not the way to go. So by rule of thumb, you want to allow at least an hour gap between your meal and the pre-workout. And then obviously, like as just mentioned, another half an hour to an hour gap after that point before you actually start training. So again, if you're someone who's doing that, give that a try, see if that fixes it. Point number four, and quite an important one that a lot of you guys are probably aware of as already anyway, is taking stim breaks. You know, if you take high stim pre-workouts for long periods of time, you know, day in, day out, for months on end, your body does sort of grind to a halt. You know, you do feel it, you feel fatigued, you feel tired, your central nervous system, adrenal glands and all that stuff is a bit battered. So it's definitely key to either come off stims for a couple of weeks, you know, every couple of months, or to come right down to a low end, sort of low stim pre-workout for a period of time as well. Myself and Aaron personally, we take sort of two to three weeks off every two to three months. Obviously, if we if we could take more time than that, we would, but we've just got such a big backlog of reviews to get done, we can't afford that luxury. But guys, definitely take a stim break, let your body restore to its default settings, and then, you know, give it a good few weeks off the stims, or like I say, on low stims, and then introduce them back in, and they should start hitting nicely again. <laughs> Number five, put simply, you may just have a shit pre-workout. Simple as that, you know. It might be that the label is suggesting it's really good, but in reality it's not. You know, it could be dodgy, underdosed, who knows? But the fact of the matter is it could be shit, and that's probably why you're not feeling it. So, you know, always do your research, always check up on reviews, whether it be via us or other review channels. 
looking at reviews directly for a pre-workouts manufacturer's website isn't always the best go-to because they can you know be angled to obviously make the product look good seeing as it's the manufacturer's website who's selling it so yeah like i say do your research make sure you actually pick up a decent pre-workout in the first place Number six is genetics. Simple as that, guys. It might be that you've got a friend who says, you know, you give him Edge of Insanity and he's like, oh, I don't really feel it. You know, it feels all right, but not really doing much to me. There you go. You might have a high tolerance to alpha yohimbine and yohimbine HCL, those sorts of ingredients. Therefore, he's not really feeling the pre-workout because that's the sort of pre-workout that leans heavily on the fact that you're going to be sensitive to alpha yohimbine. So yeah, genetics, what ingredients affect different people in different ways, your tolerance levels to said ingredients, how your body personally processes the ingredients, all of that, you've got to take all that into account, guys. Number seven, a very key point that, you know, I think a lot of you guys may be doing, you know, we've gone through phases of doing it ourselves, and that's taking in a lot of caffeine throughout the day prior to taking your pre-workout. So think about it this way, if you're not touching any caffeine at all all day, and then boom, take your pre-workout that's got 400, 500 milligrams of caffeine before you work out. Obviously, your body's going to be sensitive to it and it's going to kick and you're going to feel it. Whereas if you're taking in, you know, lots of energy drinks, coffees, teas, you know, any caffeine source really throughout the day from the minute you wake up right the way around to say you train in the evening, for example, then your body's already been soaking up caffeine all day. So when you go and take a pre-workout and you're trying to shock your adrenal glands, they're all going to be burnt out from all the caffeine you've been having all day. So that's another very important key factor to take into account. Switching to decaf drinks or simply even just lowering your caffeine amount throughout the day in general. Both of those things will have massive benefits when it comes to actually making sure the pre-workout works to the best of its ability. So another one to be aware of. Point number eight, another interesting one is sleep. If you're super sleep deprived, you know, you're tired, you've had a long week, you've been working crazy hours, you've just simply not been sleeping, your body doesn't always respond to stimulants in a positive way. You know, you could bang down a bunch of caffeine and it could just leave you feeling frazzled, you know, like you're spinning your tires almost, like your body can't physically process it and use it. So what I'm trying to say is if you really want to feel the pre-workout to the best of its ability and get the most out of it, Make sure you've at least had, you know, a reasonable amount of sleep. Make sure you don't feel completely crashed out to the world. You want to at least be on a nice middle point for the pre to take you up. If you're, you know, absolutely dead, even the stimulants aren't going to do much for you. That might be why you have days where you just don't feel the pre-workout because you're just so pooped, it's having no effect whatsoever. We've personally come across this a bunch of times, you know, where we've tried different pre-workouts for reviews. Obviously, we try every pre-workout at least several times before a review, but it might be some days where we haven't slept well, you know, I've only got three, four hours sleep, we've had a rough few days, we take it, don't really feel it. The weekend might come where we're off work, we get a nice night's sleep, we train in the afternoon, and fantastic, you know, it hits us really nicely. So yeah, sleep is a key thing to consider when it comes to making sure the pre-workout hits you properly. So another one I'm gonna kind of roll all into one is diet, hydration, you know, digestion, your gut health, all of that sort of thing, you know. If you're on a clean, nice, healthy diet, you're well hydrated, you're taking the pre-workout at the right time, following all the other points, then it's gonna hit you nicely. However, if you're stuffing your face full of shit food, junk all day, you know, you're not very hydrated, your body's already not gonna be functioning at its maximum capability. So what makes you think it's gonna be able to utilize a pre-workout to its maximum ability? So I guess what I'm trying to say is just make sure that everything else is on point and the pre-workout is that cherry on the top to take it to that next level, rather than using the pre-workout as the primary method to get yourself you know, geared up for the gym. So everything else has got to be on point already. Like I say, gut health, digestion, diet, hydration, all that stuff. And rounding off with point number 10 is unrealistic expectations. It might just simply be, you know, that you're taking a pre-workout and you're just expecting too much. A lot of people I know rely on Excelsior now as their go-to pre-workout, which is crazy. And because they've been on that for so long, any other pre-workout just doesn't cut it. Now that's become the new normal for them, the new expectation for how a pre-workout should feel. When in actual fact, you know, some might argue it's, it's very much not a pre-workout with some of the stories we've heard, but that's a, a story for another day perhaps. But yeah, so I guess just manage your expectations, look at the label, sort of work out how it should be hitting you, and, uh, and go from there. 
So guys, that was just a quick 10 points that myself and Aaron have talked about quite a lot, you know, since we started the channel. That's kind of um, our general consensus on the best way to make sure pre-workouts hit you. But we're curious to know, what are your sort of tricks of the trade? You know, what do you do to ensure that the pre-workout hits you perfectly? What's, what's the weirdest experience you've had with pre-workout? You know, where you thought that it's going to knock your head off and you've not really felt it or even put you to sleep? Let us know in the comments down below. We're curious to hear all of it. And as always, guys, stay stimmed.